Well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Matt Nolan, and um, I'm here with Krista Saad to talk about a really special project um, that uh, we've both been kind of working on, and it involves the kind of marriage of two, uh, or partnership of two arts organizations. One, Watershed Center for the Ceramic Arts, uh, located in Maine, and um, AIDA, which is, stands for the Association for Israel's Decorative Arts. We sent Krista, um, Sana, who's here, Mrs. Sama, and Dirk Stashki is the uh, watershed representation to Israel for AIDA Shed. We had not met, um, and when I went to Israel, I didn't know Sana at all. I had met Dirk Stashki twice briefly. So imagine going to a, a foreign country such as Israel with two people you've never met before representing our country, America, and hopefully it's to the best that we can. All right, Sana, we can start. Thank you. So it, this is a little bit of a photo journal, but I really wanted to share my enthusiasm about my travels because uh, I really didn't know what I was getting into. And I received an email right before I left uh, from Avner, this fellow who was going to be my liaison. I didn't know much about Avner, but he sent me this little image of himself. And, it, and that's what he sent me. <laughs> Welcome to Israel. This is what you'll see when you come out of the airport. I was kind of scared. You know, my dad said, who's picking you up? This is the fabulous Avner and his, his partner, Ami, who I spent the first night in their home. And, you know, the next day, Avner took me to Tel Aviv. So these are going to roll fast, and, and I'm sorry about that, but there's so many beautiful images to share, so I'm just going to let them roll. Um, Tel Aviv was really not on the agenda as far as a ceramic destination, yet there were some amazing potters living and working right there, and as we walked down the street, we ran into them. I mean, it's like everybody knows everybody, it seemed. And I was really struck by the character, like these images of these, these locations. I didn't even know what I was looking at. But travel is the best education in my mind. So I just kept my eyes peeled, and I tried to really let people tell me the story of their own, you know, without having any preconceived notion. I let my eye and my ear just lead me through this country. So I was really interested in looking at the street art as well, which you'll see. And, and I ran into this potter. I bought her cup across the street at a cooperative. She's a lusterware artist, and there she was dropping her work off, you know. So. I really got a feeling pretty quickly that this is a small country and the people know and love each other and the warmth was so apparent, not just through the temperature of that day, I mean Avner and I were sweating through our shirts, but it was the, the excitement and the, the liveliness of the country that I really was aware of. So this is just my first impression, you know, the food, oh, wow. you know, you got to go and eat the real stuff that's that's being served, you know, out of the on the street, basically. So Abner gave me my day one tour before the other two even arrived. I got a little preview. This was another artist studio that we stopped in to visit. And as I followed the street art, I really started to find some interesting alleys and some characters. And Abner just let me kind of go wild. So. Uh, when you see my work at, at the booth, you'll understand why I'm interested in street art. I have a display of spray paint cans there. But like these young fellows, I mean, they spoke English, they're on Facebook. I mean, it's like the, my world became smaller and smaller as I made friends everywhere I went on the street. Then after I went to the airport and picked up the other two. So there, here's me, Krista. <laughs> Very excited to be here, as you can see. And um, I mean, all of the characters that I got to know over these two weeks will be introduced throughout this, so you'll see all of their faces, because I think it's really important to share the story um, of the people, because my two weeks there was about the people. Um, this was our introductory dinner with some of the people that hosted us there, and some of you may know Michal, I love this woman. I don't even know exactly what her role was to us right there, but she teaches at Givat Haviva, where we've been working for two weeks there. And her mother is a very famous potter. So we were fortunate to see some of that collection. And then she and her husband drove us the next day to the Sea of Galilee in this enormous rig of a car, all of us in this car. <laughs> so um, we were barely over our jet lag and we were suddenly at the Sea of Galilee. So, you know, I, I grew up studying the Bible and reading a lot about different religions myself, so to me to see a lot of these sites um, in person was more than moving. Um, here's Dirk. 
I tried to show everybody individually and their current work now, as well as the in-studio work. So you'll really, by the end of this, I think you'll, you'll get a great picture of what we did. And in the two weeks, peppered between the studio work were these off-site visits, right? Because you can't just go be in a studio for two weeks. You've got to get out and see the place. So they were such amazing hosts, Avner and Michal and some of the others that they drove us to these locations, unloaded us, explained the history, reloaded us on, and you know, onto the next site. In two weeks, I saw, you know, as much as anybody can see in two weeks. So here we went to a kibbutz that is still an operating kibbutz, and um, Sana's graduate school friend, Varda, is the, a working artist on, in that kibbutz, and so we went and visited her. She brought us in to meet her family. They had a meal for us. We saw her studio. Um, I mean, like I say, at this point, we were still just overwhelmed that we were even in Israel, but it was like getting these little sneak peeks right into people's homes, literally. So, um, you know, these were some shots I took and Avner took, just really trying to document um, the way that the program operates, which is putting people together in an unsuspecting fashion. Um, and letting them talk. You know, it's sort of like we're so used to Israel being a, such a political conversation that when you add ceramics to the mix and um, bring these people together, what happens is just community develops. So, you know, drinking tea, sharing, sharing, breaking bread literally together. Um, that was one of the first things everybody did when we went anywhere was just offer us a, a, a bite to eat, a, a sip of tea, and then the conversation could go any direction. So um, this was just the very first weekend. We hadn't even set up our studio yet. And um, everything about this first weekend to me was a little bit of a blur. Then we get to the art center. So Givad Haviva, it says it right there, education, peace, and social solidarity. This is a former kibbutz now used to teach English, Arabic, Hebrew. Um, young soldiers go there to start some of their professional career development. And there's Ronit, who uh, you saw in some of the earlier shots. But it was really fun to get there and have all the Israelis roll in. And it was like they were at summer camp. They all were hugging, and they mostly all knew each other. And the three Americans, we were sort of the new ones. And you know, they came over and made us very welcome right away. The only um, requirement that I remember was that we all show up for lunch and dinner together and eat a communal meal. And the, young, the younger uh, group would cook the um, dinner for us every night. So it was really special to have home-cooked meals on site. And um, a lunch was brought in locally every day. But we always sat together and dined. And you'll see some of these images of us eating together as well. But um, as you can start to see now through these studio images, the work just sprung up. Um, and people quickly found their own friends in the groups. And we had, I think, four rooms. So all four rooms were occupied and the, the activity was just contagious. This is really what you could call a group of people who, who bonded immediately and we all stayed together to the bitter end. They had to kind of just separate us with a crowbar, I think, by the last day. But um, you can see the community starting to develop here. So. What happened was just very natural. We, we all, um, we worked, we migrated towards each other's areas. We just asked questions about the work and through the work, the conversations about the people and the land and the history um, came out in a way that was much more real for me. And it was really the spirit of watershed that Matt described earlier that um, we, this format sort of developed from and watershed they make it very clear on the first day that if you go and write poetry and swim in the swim hole all week and don't make one thing out of clay, that's fine. And that's kind of what they told us here. They said, just show up for the meals. <laughs> and it's like, you know, around food, everything starts. Now, this academy is, is pretty much the number one ceramics program in Israel, I, I, I do believe it is, I should say. And we had the good fortune of having a personal guided tour uh, through there during their final exhibition. And uh, Yael Asmoni, who was in our group, was, is an instructor there, so she showed us some of her favorite pieces made by her star students. I was blown away. I thought all of the work in this show was so cutting edge. Um, those last pieces of the profile, cut pots, I had never seen. I mean, installations were powerful. I, I think I could make a broad generalization and dare say that the work in Israel was more powerful than works I've seen in our country as a whole. Uh, 
there was a uh, the content is powerful and the use of the material is very true to material as we say there was uh, yet then there was this very kind of um, you know 21st century works creeping in so I, we're getting to an now towards sort of the end I did this all very chronologically because now you'll start to see the work is developing there's glazes coming out um, two weeks is a very short time kind of like Matt said a nanosecond plus uh, to make finished work in ceramics it's it's almost you know sort of an impossibility but we just we fired work as fast as we could we discussed the results um, we refired we started again we, we just kept making stuff and um, that's a Viva from uh, Aida up on the top there. So down on the right is some of my finished works, and on the top is uh, Guy Jana, my neighbor's finished works. I actually had to set up his display. We had a little open house, and he had never really had much experience displaying works, so then that kind of conversation ensues. And now here's a bunch of the finished works. Um, we put up a show at the end, and we had no idea who would, would attend, but basically the entire ceramics community from the, the you know, they could drive to uh, Givata Viva within an hour or so came, and we had a huge turnout, and they just were dying of curiosity to see what we had made. I, I felt so supported in this community that I gave a lecture, as did Sana and Dirk, we were each honored and, and presented a quick lecture at the end, and it was like every seat was taken, people stayed the whole way through it, they asked questions, and then here we are at the very end having our little cup exchange, which we all did amongst ourselves in the group. Everybody was happy. I mean, um, the Peace Gallery. I mean, the, it, it really, Gavata Viva was a magical place. So in closing, I just want to say that um, I'm already working on concocting a show, Matt and I together. We want to exhibit um, works of these artists and anybody that has been a part of this project in Israel and, and America as well. But um, to really show the power of the work over there and the community and the people that know each other and, and sort of the collaborations that have developed through this project and through Watershed and the Artists Invite Artists. And um, so if anybody is interested in these kinds of ideas, you can talk to us after. But I just want to thank you all for being here and to Aida and Watershed and all of our supporters and SOFA for letting us have this little room to show you the images. So thank you.